morning, children, y'all. Welcome to Sunday School. I hope you had a lovely week. Before we go into this wonderful lesson, let's pray. Bow down your head and close your eyes. Our Lord and our God, we are so grateful. We honor you. We glorify your name. You've taken us through the week. You provide for us. We are here again to learn at your feet. Holy Spirit, come and teach us this lesson. Jesus, give us the spirit of Joseph. Bless our mommy. Bless our daddies. Bless all our friends. Come and say so through this lesson. Sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost fire. At the end, Father God, we want to reign with you in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's listen to what a prison looks like. Yeah, in the prison, prison is a big place. But I'm showing you here what cell look like. A cell is a place where individually one person stay in the room. And in, the, in that room, there's a gate here. This one represents bars. And inside you have the toilet. And the, the little place you use the toilet. You are just alone there. The person be alone in the prison. It must have been so lonely for Joseph. This uh, prison, when someone is in the cell, the warden, the prison at, uh, and, uh, officer, we bring big keys like this, a bunch of keys. We open the, the chain or the door, this bar, for you for that person to come out and play with other inmates inmates are other group of people in the prison so from here you can see that the loneliness with joseph must have been so high for instance if one is there you don't see mommy and daddy or friends if you do notice things the person can be locked up however it's not everybody that does not things that go into cell or prison. Some people are innocent like Joseph. You could have been there not at the right time. The wrong place at the right time or the right time at the wrong place. Children, the topic we have this morning is trouble for Joseph. As you rightly see with this clip we have shown about the prison. Let's go in detail what Joseph actually went through. Now let's reset our memory verse. Fear not, for I am with thee. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 5. Thank you. That was taken by Mercy. Thank you very much, Mercy. Now, children, take up your Bibles and read along with us. We are going to read from Genesis chapter 39 verse 1 to 6 and verses 19 to 23 but we only go to read two verses there verses one, verse 1 and verse 4 read along with us genesis chapter 39 verse 1 and 4 and joseph was brought down to egypt and potiphar an officer of pharaoh captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him of the hands of the Ismailites, which had brought him down thither. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, 
and all that he had he put into his hand. Thank you, thank you. That was well read by fate. Joseph was bought by the uh, Ishmaelites, the traders, some of the traders, and sold again to an Egyptian captain of the guard, a, 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 a very prominent soldier during the time of Pharaoh. But Joseph, his name was, yes, Potiphar, captain of the guard. And because Joseph was saved, he was so like him. He was so like him. God gave him that grace. God had that thing in him. You know, when you are saved and sanctified, you will not like to do bad things. And you always, any place you go, you'll be spotted. They know you are a Christian. Joseph had that spirit. Joseph was now made the head to oversee Potiphar, uh, yes, Potiphar's uh, uh, household affairs. He overlooked everything. But this Potiphar wife told lies against Joseph. But because Potiphar traveled and when he came back, the wife told Potiphar everything that this the lie she told about Joseph. Potiphar was was so angry. Not angry at Joseph, but why should it be Joseph? Because in his heart and heart, in from him, he knew Joseph had been so faithful. And God has been with Joseph all along. He took Joseph and sent Joseph to prison. You can see the bar there where the warden will come and talk to the person. Or if you have visitor, you come and talk to the person through that bar like a cage. We don't want to be like that. We don't want to go near prison. We want God to come and save our souls. Sanctify. Fill with the Holy Spirit and fire. It's not everybody that go to prison that does naughty, naughty things that must have committed an offense. Some innocent people are there, like Joseph. Children, we don't want to follow bad people. Always have all this less in your heart. And God will be with you. Jesus will be with you. Say it. Our statement, really, God is with me. Any place you go, remind yourself, God is with me. God is with you. Say it to yourself. That's an assurance. Have you ever experienced fear? For instance, some children, if you ask them, go to the toilet. They say, there's no light there. Oh, mommy, I can't go to my room. Put on the light. Remember, God is with you. Fear not. Don't, don't be afraid. Pray. And go to bed. So, some children will go to bed. Ah, I need Teddy. I need Teddy to sleep with me. I need Teddy to sleep with me. So, we go 
Ah, when did Dana start to sleep with me? When did Dana start to sleep with me? Oh, God, their senior sister. Mommy, I'm going to your bed. I'm going to your bed. No. Remember, God is with you. Once you pray, God knows the best for you. God was with Joseph? Yes. God will be with you. Children, our memory verse said, Fear not, for I am with thee, I am with you. He said, Fear not. Don't be afraid. Read your Bible, pray, pray for God to save your soul. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Save my soul. Give yourself to God. God will be with you as he was with Joseph. Even in the prison that was so lonely. Yes. For Joseph, God was with him. He even found favor from the officers and from friends there. Children, this is homework for next week. Ask your daddy to help you. From this, when you read this, who Potiphar, a uh, wife, link it to the pictures. This is another homework for ages six to eight. Here, from here, just match up with all these the names here you find it from this chart this puzzle link it up our next week lesson is lesson 13d 13d the title of our lesson a dream come true have a blessed week bye Good morning once again, boys and girls. You're welcome to the answer lesson for this week. Today, we're focusing on chapter three, which is also titled Signs of the Times. This is also lesson 107 in our curriculum. But before we get into our lesson, I just want to ask you a few questions and maybe show you a few images. Are you ready? Right, here we have some signs. I know you might be familiar with some of them, but I just want to ask you, what are these signs and what do they do? What are they used for? Can you just take a moment at home just to answer these two questions for me? Wow, well done, well done all of you. I know you named as many signs as you could over there. Wow, but I know some of you are already thinking, what do these signs have to do with today's lesson? Well, as much as the signs we've just seen are warning signs and they indicate that something is about to happen or we need to be careful. Today, we're learning about the signs of the times. Again, another confusing jargon, a confusing word. What do the signs of the times mean? What are they? So let me explain. When Jesus, you know, ascended back to heaven, he left us with a promise that he was going to come back. But we don't know the time. Neither does Jesus know the time. Only God the Father knows the time. But there is one thing that Jesus said we should do. That is to watch out for signs. Signs that would indicate that his coming is near. Some of the signs are already happening in our lifetime today. Some have already happened. And these are the signs we want to look at in our lesson today. To be able to know when it's almost that time our Savior will come. I just want to ask you, can you think or possibly imagine what some of these signs could be? Hmm. Well, you don't have to think too hard. We can explore the word of God together this morning and find out what some of these signs are. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 24. And verses 6 and 7 mentions that there's going to be wars. 
How many wars are you currently seeing and experiencing right now? If you switch on the news, there's a war in every other region of the world. Think of the Ukraine war. Think of the conflict in the Middle East. All these things are indicating that it's almost time. You know, the Bible mentions that there will be famines. Well, another big word. You know, you might be thinking, what is a famine? But a famine is a, is a great hunger. You know, where, where, where people are hungry all the time, there is not enough food and people are starving. I'm sure you've seen a few adverts appealing for help in those regions where there isn't enough food and people are starving. There is famine. And, you know, we are living in these times. And pestilences, oh, another big word again. <laughs> well, pestilences are diseases, you know, of untold scales, some of them incurable you know, diseases that just torment us. I'm sure you can already think of some pestilences we've lived through. Some of them still, you know, make us wear masks up to this day. Things like COVID-19, you know, things like cancer. All these things are pestilences that have plagued, you know, our our, our, our world. You know, and, and, and they're also signs of the coming of the Lord. You know, we, we discover a new disease, a new virus every other week which is not normal. It's only pointing to one thing. You know, I want you to think of earthquakes and natural disasters. Hmm, how many earthquakes have you, you know, heard of in the past year? How many natural disasters, the floods in Pakistan, the, the you know, the, the landslides. A lot of things are happening around our world and these are all signs. You know, even in the skies, in the heavens, just this past week, you know, there was a meteor, you know, that, that, that struck across the skies, which was burning so brightly. And a lot of people in Scotland saw it. I don't know, maybe you might have seen it, but I saw it all over the news. You know, these are signs, you know, we we'll see wonders in the heavens, you know. And I know already some of you are thinking, well, this has been happening for so many years. We've seen wars you know, before us and many times before people have always been hungry. Yes, that might be true, but the frequency and intensity that we're experiencing it at this time has become so much. You know, even the Bible says that in these last days, you know, it will become more and more and more and more. And we can see already what's happening, not just with the natural disasters and things, but just with the attitudes of our people. Haven't you seen that violence has gone up? Immorality has gone up. It's like the world doesn't care anymore. You know, violence, you see it on TV anyhow. You, you have it on your phones, in your games. It, it's just all over. You know, people improperly dressed. It's, it's being normalized. Things that never used to be normal. And it's things like this that indicate that we are almost at that time. The time of the returning of our Lord. I'm sure now that we're all familiar with the signs of the times, we're able to identify them and confidently, you know, prepare ourselves. But Jesus also left us with a warning. He told us to be very, very careful because in the last days, there shall be false prophets. A lot of these false prophets will want to deceive us. They'll want us to follow the wrong thing. They'll want us to forget about Christ's second coming. They'll just want us to keep us distracted from our journey to heaven. You know, but Christ warned us about them. And there are so many ways we can identify these false prophets. You know, and we're going to share those ways together. Um, in Matthew 24, verse 5. You know, it warns us about those that claim to be Christ or claim to be a form of Christ. You know, we're already seeing people that claim that they have powers and they are Christ themselves. They have reincarnated. I'm sure you've seen all these people out there. You know, Christ wonders about these people. And when we know the truth, we know how to filter out these false prophets and their false doctrines. You know, Christ also warned us in, in, in Romans 16 through his word that we should be weary, we, we, we should be careful of those that deceive us with good words, those that preach, you know, other doctrines which do not, you know, agree with what's in the Bible, you know, doctrines that make you feel good, that make you feel wonderful, but there is no truth in that. You know, let's be careful as young people not to, to fall victim to that. You know, we're, we're also... Uh, 
being being warned against being tossed about by any kind of doctrine you know we're in an age where things are constantly changing you know today is one thing tomorrow is another people are always following all kinds of trends even in christianity people are making their own trends let's not be christians that follow you know all kinds of foolish trends all kinds of foolish doctrines but we should stick to the word of god you know and we'll never go wrong with that even as christians today we have to be very careful the bible says as one of the signs the love of many shall wax cold just look at our society today and have a just have a look you know, there is no love at all. Love towards the things of God, love towards each other. Divorce rates are going up, you know. And even if you look at on the Christian side of things, people don't even bother attending services anymore. You know, if you can attend service, then why not? You know, let's let's try our best to keep ourselves spiritually vigilant because we never know when the Lord will come. But it's not always, you know, doom and gloom. The Bible says, as one of the signs as well, the gospel shall be shared far and wide all over the world. And we can see today there are many organizations working towards that, translating the Bible into many languages. If you put on the TV, you will see various channels sharing the news, sharing the news in various regions, various languages as well, which is a positive and inspiring sign that at least the gospel is being shared far and near. But, you know, now that we know these signs, it's, 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 it's not okay to just know. We have to do something about it. We have to keep ourselves prepared. We have to keep ourselves ready. And how do we do that? You know, we can do that by reading our Bible, praying all the time, you know, being about the, the things of God, keeping ourselves busy. You know, they say an idle mind is the devil's workshop. We want to be busy about the things of God. We want to be watchful in prayer. And you will see how the Lord will keep you till it's time for his second coming. Now that we've come to the end of our lesson, I just want to remind you of a few key things. That Jesus left us with signs to look out for. The Bible is filled with signs to look out for that indicate the nearing of his second coming. And it is not enough to know these signs, but we have to act upon them. If you are not saved, today is an opportunity to be ready to prepare yourself and be saved. If you are saved, continue being watchful, remain vigilant. And also just to remember, we are living in these last days. Some of these signs have already started to come alive in our time. For example, Israel has become a nation once again, which is something which was prophesied before. So we can see that we are living in these end times and we need to be very careful and be prepared. So I do pray that you've learned something from this wonderful lesson and I pray that the Lord keeps you till the very end. God bless you all. Look up the verses on the road signs to find the missing words below. Next lesson is lesson 108 titled, Be Ready. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful lesson. Thank you, O Lord, that you loved us so much that you left us with signs that were indicating your coming is near. Lord Jesus, we pray that you prepare us. O Lord, those that are still looking for salvation, O Lord, save them. Those that are looking for other experiences, O Lord, give them their heart's desire. O oh Lord, open our spiritual eyes that we keep watchful and we keep vigilant and we are always ready. O oh Lord, we dedicate the rest of the services into your mighty hands. Bless everyone today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.